There are questions on some knowledge tests and check rides on the radio magnetic indicator, or RMI, but we don't have much chance to get a look at one of those instruments these days. If you fly a G1000, you get the functionality of the RMI overlaid on your PFD, which mirrors the way it works, but let's look at the real thing in this Pilatus cockpit. We're flying north near Baltimore Washington Airport. Let's tune the frequency for the Baltimore Vortac, 115.1. If we switch over to VLOC mode, we'll be able to track it on the horizontal situation indicator, which might be more familiar to most pilots. It shows the needle deflected right. This doesn't intuitively tell us much right now about where the station is in relation to ourselves. But have a look over at the RMI to the left. First, let's understand what we're looking at. There are two arrows. The number one arrow is a single line, while the number two arrow is a double line. There are two indicators along the bottom, both of which right now are pointing to NAV, which means the arrows are working off the NAV frequencies. We set NAV1 to the Baltimore Vortac, so the number one arrow is pointing to where that station is. So right away we intuitively know where the station is. This is similar to how an ADF works, and sometimes you'll hear that the job of the arrow is to simply say, it's over there. It's pointing a direction, relative to where our nose is pointing, where the station is. If we have a look in that direction and kind of sneak a peek through the windscreen, we can see the airport, where the VOR is located, right where the arrow says. If we want to fly direct to the VOR, it's just a matter of turning the heading indicated on the RMI, roughly 050 degrees, not accounting for wind. As we turn, the compass cards on both the HSI and the RMI are turning to match our heading change. This doesn't happen on all RMIs, and it makes our job of determining bearing a lot easier here. Now, when we roll out with the arrow pointing straight ahead, we can look out the window and see BWI in the Baltimore VOR right ahead. If we get back on a north heading, we can see on the map that we're on course to cross over this marked radial 258 in a little bit. We could tell when we're crossing that radial by looking at the tail of the arrow. It shows what radial we're on. We start on about the 240 radial, and as it moves, we move closer to 258 until we get there and see that we're crossing it on the chart as well. We could track non-directional beacons too. The Ellicott City NDB is on 371, so we'll key that into our ADF, and when it's set, flip it active. Let's also put the Baltimore VOR into Nav2 here. Looking back at the RMI, remember those arrows pointing to Nav? If we hit the swap button for number one, we can switch it to ADF. Now the number one arrow is tracking the NDB station we set up. The number two arrow is now tracking the Baltimore Vortac, as we had just set that up too. Okay, so this air whale on the 334 radial goes through both the Baltimore Vortac and the Ellicott City NDB, or almost does anyway, it's not an official part of the airway. But let's say we want to fly outbound on the 334 radial. What will happen as we approach it is that the head of the number one arrow tracking the Ellicott NDB will swing towards 334, while the tail, the number two arrow, tracking the VOR, will also swing towards 334. And when we're actually on that radial, the head and the tail of the two arrows will meet and overlap on 334. That's our cue to turn 334 and fly outbound. Now let's make it easier and turn off the number two arrow by setting the nav to a random frequency. Now if we want to fly that 334 bearing to Ellicott City, we keep the arrow pointing at 334. You may have heard of push the head, pull the tail. Right now the head is just right of 334, so if we fly right of that, it'll push the head back towards 334. Looking out front, we see Ellicott City just below. Even if you don't have an RMI, you can play with the functionality using the PFD options in a G1000 equipped aircraft. It's a great way to boost situational awareness. Flight Insight ground schools have over 15,000 pilots of all levels training to become better pilots. Join them today at the link here and in the description.